Hey guys, welcome back to another installment of what I eat in a day. I'm gonna start off the morning by making a smoothie bowl. I really, like in my mind, I want it to be fall, ready for the change of seasons. But here in Colorado, it's still been in the high 90s, so we've been doing a lot of smoothie bowls, salads, cold foods, because it's so hot. I woke up earlier than Eric today, which is very rare. Usually I'm last out of bed. And I've been like tiptoeing around, waiting for him to wake up so I can use the blender. And he just woke up, so we're gonna make smoothie bowls. When left to my own devices, I have this habit of making my smoothies way too big. I think it's just like a hangover from my high carb, low fat vegan days when I was making like 48 ounce smoothies every single day. Um, so now I will always measure my ingredients into whatever cups I'm using so that the smoothie isn't bigger than that. So in here we've got bananas, peaches, strawberries, uh, mangoes, and raspberries. And then I also have some of these acai packets from Trader Joe's that I like. I'll probably, next time I'm at Sprouts, try to pick up some acai powder. Okay, I just finished eating breakfast. I'm stuffed. I feel like smoothie bowls always fill me up so much, but I want to still make coffee and then tell you a little bit about the sponsor of today's video. So I'm working with a brand called Cometeer. They make a super cool product. I don't think I've seen anything like it on the market, but it's these little capsules. They're aluminum, completely recyclable, just in regular curbside recycling, and they contain frozen pucks of coffee extract. So what Cometeer does is they partner with some of the world's top roasters, and then the coffee is roasted, then immediately brewed, and then it's flash frozen right at the peak of its freshness just to preserve all the flavor. They have this special extraction process, so what is in here is about 10 times stronger than regular brewed coffee. So you can prepare it in a bunch of different ways. You can just pop the frozen puck into a cup and pour hot water or hot milk into it to make like a latte, or what I really like to do, I'm a big fan of iced coffee, especially since it's still really hot, is I will defrost it and then I'll just pour it into my iced oat milk. Today I actually want to make like a caramel macchiato, so I'll show you that. It's a really cool system. It's sustainable, as I mentioned, it's completely recyclable. And then it arrives in packaging that is also recyclable. It's all plant-based shipping materials. And they give you a lot of variety as far as roasts and different uh, coffee roasters go. So today I'm gonna use this medium roast. I typically like medium or dark roasts by the Birch Coffee Roaster. And they have like little tasting notes on here too. So this is chocolate, nuts, and fruit. But I think this is cool, especially if you're somebody who really likes the convenience factor and maybe you're already using a different system to brew with capsules that have grounds in them. Um, these have no grounds in them. It's just the coffee extract. So that's why they're completely recyclable, which is not true of other capsules. Plus I think the quality and flavor of this coffee is really, really good. Speaking as someone who you know drinks coffee every single day, I have pretty much every single gizmo and gadget that you could think of to brew coffee like AeroPress, Mocha Pot, Chemex, Pour Over, French Press. So I love and appreciate all those methods and I still think this really stacks up to freshly brewed coffee. And the one thing I don't have is an espresso machine so I love being able to kind of use this extract in place of espresso shots so that if I'm craving a latte I don't have to go to the coffee shop and spend like 
six dollars. So I believe since they're so new, Cometeer is not available to the general public right now, but they have offered me a discount code for you. It's 50% off your first order and you can bypass that waitlist. So I will have it here on the screen as well as down below and you can click on that. And if you do try it out, let me know what you think about it. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to make this drink that I have been enjoying lately. I've got my cup of ice. I have the best oat milk, Oatly. And I also made a little batch of homemade vegan caramel syrup. I'm still tweaking the recipe, so I'm not gonna give it to you right now, but it's just essentially sugar that I caramelized, and I added a little bit of vegan butter, uh, some vanilla extract, and then a little bit of coconut cream. But I'm still tweaking it. I'll let you guys know once I am fully happy with it. And then I have, like I mentioned before, this birch coffee roaster medium roast capsule that I just set out on the counter to defrost before I started making my smoothie bowl, so it is liquefied now. And I'm going to add a little bit of this sugar-free vanilla. I have like a tiny little bit, just enough for this drink today, and i got to get more, or maybe I'll try to make my own from scratch. The last of that in here. And then I like to pour the coffee in on top of the ice so I get that cool gradient effect. Strictly aesthetic though. And then, let me scoot up here. Nice little caramel drizzle. Okay. Oh yeah, it's so good. So I'm gonna drink this, gonna get caffeinated, get some work done, and then I'll check back in with you for lunch. Try this. What is it? It's a caramel macchiato. Mm. Ooh, that's right? really good. I need to perfect this, and then it'll be like... Look, most of my head isn't even in the shot. Hello. <laughs> so, it is lunchtime. We're gonna make some buffalo cauliflower wings. I have not made these in a long time, and they used to be a complete staple in my diet when I first went vegan. I would make them like three times a week. So, I kind of miss that time. We're gonna make them in the oven so I have it preheated to 425 degrees and it's a super forgiving recipe I just make a really simple seasoned batter you can use pretty much any kind of flour I'm using chickpea flour today and at this point I don't even measure but I'm using maybe a fourth a cup chickpea flour the cauliflower I use is pretty small today and then I'm going to add in some paprika just a couple of shapes then some onion and garlic powder and a little bit of nutritional yeast as well and you can add literally any kind of spices you like you can make like a southwestern style and add taco seasoning um, but I'm just going pretty basic today give this a whisk and then I'm going to add in a little bit of water kind of need to eyeball it because depending on the type of flour you use it is going to absorb more or less liquid, and chickpea flour absorbs a lot of liquid, so I'm going to add maybe a couple more shakes of the flour. I'm also going to add in a generous pinch of salt and some fresh ground black pepper, a splash of water. You can add in a little bit of oil as well. Oh, the oven is ready. You can add in a little bit of oil if you like, or some butter. But I'm going to skip it for the batter. I am going to put a little bit in the buffalo sauce when I coat them. Okay. So we've got like a medium thin batter. It's like a little bit thinner than pancake batter. And I'm just going to dump in my cauliflower florets. You can use your hands if you like. I am not in the mood to get messy today, so I'm just going to coat them. They don't need to be like 100% coated, as long as each of them has a little bit of the batter on there, it's fine. And if you want at this point, you can also sprinkle on some breadcrumbs, panko breadcrumbs are really good on this, and just give them a toss, but we're going to do no breadcrumbs today, just out of sheer laziness to be honest. Just going to dump them on, spread them out to give them some space. And then I'm just gonna pop these in the oven, usually around 30 to 35 minutes. You can give them a flip midway if you like, just so that they crisp up evenly, but usually I don't even bother because it works out fine without. So I'm gonna do that. While the cauliflower is baking, I'm gonna go ahead and do something that I've been putting off for a while. I've been meaning to make a big batch of homemade vegan deli meat. 
So there are a lot of ingredients in this recipe, as you can see, but it really does come together very quickly. And I'm gonna have a link down below. It's not my recipe, it's from the 86 Eats blog. A couple weeks back, I showed myself making her deli sliced turkey style seitan. Um, and today, I'm gonna try out her ham recipe, which is the same kind of technique and base recipe, which is based on vital wheat gluten and then super firm tofu, the kind that comes like vacuum sealed rather than in a carton with a ton of water. Um, so those are the base ingredients for both recipes, but then she just kind of mixes up the spices. So I'm hoping it's really good. I'm sure it will be. really like making my own cold cuts. It is much more cost effective than buying tofurkey slices because I feel like when we buy those, Eric and I will go through them in like a day or two. They don't come with that much. So this makes a huge, huge log and it's really good. Ever since I was introduced to the method of kneading seitan in the food processor, I swear to god I will never go back to doing it by hand, it's just so much easier. So pardon me while I consult the recipe. So I'm going to add basically everything except for the vital wheat gluten into the food processor and make a paste. Nutritional yeast, tapioca starch, some sugar, onion powder, garlic powder, smoked paprika, coriander, some nutmeg, a little bit of allspice, black pepper, ketchup, olive oil, soy sauce, liquid smoke, some of the better than bouillon vegetable base. And finally, I'm going to go in with this tofu and I'm going to crumble this in. Now we're going to blend this till it's just all mixed in evenly. Give it a scrape. And here is what we are working with. It's like a spiced tofu pate. Now we are measuring out our vital wheat gluten. Oh my god. Do you guys ever leave like a spoon or a measuring cup like, inside one of the things you were measuring and then you're like, where did this spoon go? Eric and I have two of these like long Korean spoons we got from an Asian market and these are like our favorite spoons and this one has been missing for the longest time and it was my fault. It was my fault. Just left it in this bag of gluten. I'm gonna toss this in and let the kneading commence. about to wrap our seitan log in some foil to bake. I have to say it smells so much like ham slash like hot dogs. I did not know that all of these spices were responsible for that signature ham flavor like the coriander and the allspice and the nutmeg but now that I have them all together I like can really smell it. It all makes sense. So we're going to form this into a log. Hi. Wow. Smell this. It's ham. It's ham. Okay. So we have a neat little log here. And then I threw together this brown sugar uh, mustard rub. It's just powdered mustard, brown sugar, a little bit of salt. And oh, the recipe says to like make the cute little cross hatches. All right, close enough. And then I'm going to coat it in just a little thin layer of oil so that the rub sticks to it. And then coat it in the rub. Try to get it in the little crevices. And now we're going to wrap it up like a Tootsie Roll. <laughs> okay, this we we're just going to bake half of the time covered, wrapped in foil, and then half of the time uncovered. And then you have to let it cool all the way before you can slice it, which is the hardest part because it doesn't firm up fully until it is chilled. So maybe it'll be ready by the end of the evening. We can do a little taste test, um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this in the oven. I just took the cauliflower wings out of the oven 
and we're gonna sauce them. So here I have like a tablespoon of melted vegan butter. I use some of the Kite Hill plant-based butter. I bought this to try to review on my blog and I don't love it. I probably won't buy it again. It's not bad, but it's just not as good as the Miyoko's if you're gonna pay that much. So I melted some of that in here and then I'm gonna add in some Franks and then we also have this Primal Kitchen Buffalo sauce. This was a gift from Eric's mom. I believe she said she got it at Costco and it came in a two pack so she gave us one. It's pretty good. Give us a little whisk. I am gonna pop this in the microwave for like 10 seconds just because they were both in the fridge, these sauces. I'm just gonna these in. So I was going to use these to top a salad, I even sliced up some romaine lettuce, and I was going to make like a tahini dressing, have an avocado here, squeeze some lemon juice on there, but now that I try this, I kind of just want to eat them on their own. So I'm going to do that, and maybe I'll come back and make the salad afterwards. Here's the tofu we're going to use to make our chicken. It has been frozen and defrosted. If you've never tried that, you definitely should. It changes the texture in a really cool way. Kind of makes it more like shreddable. Also this uh, tofu press, I caved and finally got one and it is really, really sweet. So I recommend. So what I'm doing is just kind of tearing it and you can kind of see how it's become a little bit more spongy. And I like to tear it into irregular pieces when I'm trying to make like a chicken style dish. You can see what I mean? Something about freezing it and defrosting it makes it really easy to press out a bunch of extra liquid. We've got our chicken pieces in this bowl and I'm gonna add in a little bit of oil. This helps to crisp it up in the oven. And I have the oven preheating to 425. I'm going to add in some garlic powder, some paprika, some onion powder, black pepper, and then rather than use salt, I'm actually gonna add in some of this vegan chicken style bouillon powder. It has salt in it. I'm also gonna add in some potato starch. And I'm gonna toss just two coat our tofu. So in this little dish I have actually some unsweetened plain vegan yogurt. I'm using the Kalina yogurt. I really like this. And I have just diluted it with a little bit of water until it's roughly the consistency of like buttermilk. And then here I just have some breadcrumbs seasoned with salt and pepper. We're going to take our seasoned chicken or tofu rather and just toss it in our breadcrumbs to coat. And then these are gonna go on the baking tray that I have right here. You can kind of see how the irregular shape that we tore the tofu into makes it look more like chicken. And it helps whenever you're breading things to make one hand the wet hand and then the other hand the dry hand so that you don't end up having both of your hands coated in breadcrumbs. Here are little nuggos. We are gonna throw these in the oven. I'm probably gonna leave them in for like 30 to 35 minutes, but I will let you know. So now let's move on to our cheese sauce. I have some soaked raw cashews. Have a small potato that I boiled along with a medium carrot. Is. Now I add garlic and onion powder to pretty much everything savory, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm still going to add in a little bit of paprika. And then 
most important ingredient here, as far as the cheesiness goes, is the nutritional yeast. Fair bit of this. We're gonna do the juice of a lemon. I'm gonna do lots of salt, black pepper. Then, this is not in the recipe as written on my blog, but I do like to usually add a little bit, just a tiny bit of miso paste to add some umami and like a little fermented flavor and some extra salt in there. Use a little bit of oat milk and a little bit of water, just enough to almost cover the ingredients. And then I'm gonna go ahead and blend this until it's smooth. You can add in a little bit of vegan butter if you like. So we've got some cavatappi that I already cooked to al dente, our sauce. And we're just gonna heat it through. I know these are Brussels sprouts that I just cut in half and blanched, so they are already tender, but I'm gonna season them and air fry them so they get crispy on the outside. Some olive oil, a little bit of red wine vinegar, some maple syrup, and salt. Then just a little bit of potato starch and into the air fryer.